Welcome to Learning in Language Arts with Mrs. Jones. Today's reading comprehension strategy will be making inferences. We will be inferring with text in this lesson. The purpose of this lesson is to meet the goal in GVC number two that students will read and find information from a sixth grade text. After this lesson, you will be able to define inference and make inferences from the text. So let's review what is an inference. Inference is a conclusion drawn or an educated guess based on information in a picture, text, or graph and the reader's own knowledge. We ask questions as we view pictures and read text to make an inference about what we think the artist or author is trying to say. The first question we ask is simply, what do I think is happening? And then we look for the clues that we see, and then we check to see if the clues match what we made, uh, what inference we made. If it is correct, then we should not have to change our inference. If it doesn't match up with the clues, then we would need to go back and change our inference. There's another strategy that we can use for making an inference. It's, a, it's basically the same thing, except for first we look in, at what we see, and then we think about what we know, and then we draw our conclusion. So let's take a look at this picture. I see a cat and also a, a stop or a not, not allowed sign. And I know that um, this is a not allowed sign. I've seen signs like that before. So I think that if this sign was somewhere, I would think that cats are not allowed. Um, also, we can infer with pictures and text. So in this example, I see Calvin and Hobbes and Hobbes is drawing a picture. Calvin says, you can draw something besides tigers, can't you? And Hobbes replies, sure, leopards, pumas, ocelots, you name it. So I know that leopards, pumas, and ocelots are also cats. So I think that Hobbes can only draw uh, certain types of cats or he will draw a cat and it will be called one of these things. So let's move on to inferring with text only. An author doesn't always tell everything that he wants the reader to know. The reader interprets the text by reading and thinking about what he already knows about the information. This can be referred to as reading between the lines. So how do good readers make inferences from texts? Well, of course, we use the clues in the text. And if there are pictures included, we will also use the pictures we look for unknown words and define them from the context. And then we look for emotion or feelings. A lot of times a writer will explain the emotion rather than telling us. So instead of saying she was sad, he might say she stood quietly as tears fell down her cheeks. We would be able to imply or infer that she was sad instead of the author telling us that. We use what we already know, and we look for explanations for events. So after an event happens in the text, we will continue to read to see what would happen after the event. We also can go back and remember what happened leading up to that event. And finally, of course, we ask questions. So let's take a look at this first example and see what, we can, um, what kind of inference we can make about Amy. Amy babysits almost every day after school. She often has to say no to families who want her to babysit because she is already busy. I can infer that Amy is a good babysitter. Let's go back and look at the text and see what clues there are. First of all, she babysits almost every day. And then she sometimes has to say no because she's already busy. So these clues lead me to believe that Amy is a good babysitter. The clues and my inference make sense, so I do not have to make any changes. Let's look at example number two and see what type of inference we can make about the activity that Josh and his dad will be doing. Josh woke up early on Saturday morning and looked outside the window. The sun was out and the heat was excruciating. His dad called to Josh and said, It is a perfect day. Don't forget to bring your towel. 
Josh grabbed a towel and they quickly left the house. So there's quite a few clues in this um, in this text. The first is that this, oh, my inference is that Josh is going to the beach um, or the lake with his dad. And I can infer this because the sun is out and the heat is excruciating and he has to take a towel. Also, it is Saturday morning, um, which is means that they probably are going somewhere for the entire day. Um, and wherever they're going, um, they're going to probably get out of the heat and they're probably gonna be getting wet. So my clues and my inference make sense. I do not need to make any changes. Boys and girls, there are three examples or three practice um, problems on the next few slides. I'd like you to read the slide and then pause and practice. So practice number one, Joe and his parents just moved here. Joe's parents both come from Guatemala and speak mostly Spanish. Joe helps them communicate in stores or at doctor's offices. What can you tell about Joe and what text clues support your inference? Practice number two, Ms. Rose has bus duty. Jacob finds a frog, picks it up, and runs over to show it to Ms. Rose. Ms. Rose screams, jumps, and runs as fast as she can into the school. What can you tell about Ms. Rose and what text clues support your inference? Um, and practice number three, this comes from uh, the second, this is the second stanza from the poem, My Shadow by Robert Louis Stevenson. The funniest thing about my shadow is the way he likes to grow. Not at all like proper children, which is always very slow. For he sometimes shoots up taller like an India rubber ball, and he sometimes gets so little that there's none of him at all. So what is happening in the to the shadow, and what clues support your inference? This is uh, our lesson on inferring with text. Hopefully after this lesson, you will be able to define inference and be able to make inference from the text as you practice with your practice pages. There is an extension to this um, activity. If you would like to visit uh, the website, uh, www.filtulga.com forward slash riddles.html. The website looks like this and it is inferring with riddles. Once you've played a few of these um, riddles, gone through these riddles and seen an example of it, then I would like for you to create your own riddle with at least six clues on Google Slides. You will find the template um, in our Google Classroom and the assignment is called Inference Riddles. So you will just add one slide to um, the slide show and then on, on Friday, we will share all of these riddles with our class. So um, that is our lesson on inferring with text. Um, until next time, thank you.